Hey, I'm Matt Widener, and I'm your code enforcement attorney. I have a passion for code enforcement departments and helping you folks to do your job better. I think code enforcement is the most underutilized public resource out there, and I want to help you run your departments better. There are two cases that have just come out that I want to share the details with you about. Uh, the first one is Palm Beach Polo. The second one is Ficken versus Dunedin. We'll get to that one later. We're going to focus on Palm Beach Polo case right here because it has an application for departments all across the state. You know the drill. You put forth your time, your effort, your trouble to run up a really good case. You bring it before the code board or special magistrate. Uh, the violator is found guilty. Fines are running. You've done your job. But then lo and behold, the violator comes before the special magistrate with a sob story. And the special magistrate, in many cases, uh, they're very forgiving. And they forgive the lien. They let it go for a song or something like that. Well, listen, this case that comes out of Palm Beach is uh, really important. Uh, we're going to get to the details here in just a second. But the bottom line is this. What Palm Beach Polo tells us is, and it's critical, special magistrate does not have the authority to reduce or release fines that have become liens. It's a critical distinction. Special magistrate may be able to reduce fines when a case is out there, but by the time the lien is recorded, that is a lien that is owned by the municipality, and the special magistrate does not have the authority to do that. So I'm going to share my screen right here and actually share the case so you can read it. You can see it right there on your screen. There's the site, Palm Beach Polo versus Village of Wellington. Here's the case. Again, there was a violation. It goes before the board. There's an order imposing a fine and a penalty, and that uh, becomes recorded. Well, here's where things are important. Under Chapter 162, uh, it specifically defines that the code board has the ability to uh, reduce fines or liens. But read here that's highlighted. Conversion of the fines to a lien divested the special magistrate of subject matter jurisdiction because the special magistrate only has authority to reduce fines. Interesting. Only has the authority to reduce fines. Next section down here. And this is where when you're quoting the judge, you're quoting the statute 162 that we all operate under. This is going to apply across the state if this reasoning is picked up across the state. Under the plain language of Chess section 162, uh, only the village's council has authority to compromise liens after they've been recorded. By attempting to reduce the amount of the lien, the special magistrate acted outside the scope of their permissible jurisdiction. Here's what is really a bombshell about this whole thing, too. It's this last uh, line that I've highlighted there. An order entered without subject matter jurisdiction is void. So I know there are a lot of people out there, new lawyers, that are saying, hey, this is just down in Palm Beach and it doesn't apply statewide. But what you need to be aware of is that if you've got special magistrates out there doing exactly the thing that's recorded here and described in this case, and in fact it's void, then the, the, the reduction doesn't matter at all. So I think the proper course of action is to do uh, what I've been arguing forever now, and that is to take these liens far more seriously. Do not engage in what I call the file and forget and then forgive uh, scenario where uh, cities just throw away liens. You know, cities and counties across the state, the taxpayers are owed billions of dollars, literally billions of dollars. And it is the duty and the obligation of public officials to collect that money. It can be done in a thoughtful manner. We're not going to go after uh, very compelling circumstances. But the bottom line is this. We have to stop thinking that liens don't matter. We have to start treating all liens as if these are real debts that are owed to citizens because they are, and we have to engage in the thoughtful process of collecting those liens. Uh, I would love to talk about this case with uh, any of your departments, do a Zoom in session, or share it with, uh, uh, or come down in person and do sessions. But please share this video with uh, your departments, uh, citywide, countywide, pass it around the state, if you will, because again, it's a critically important case. It's gonna have implications statewide, then stay tuned for Ficken versus City of Dunedin bombshell, 60-page long opinion out of federal court that tells you you've got the duty and the obligation to properly enforce your liens.